there guys and welcome back. Well I had an idea for this week's show and I was gonna start filming. Everything was set up but then this showed up in my driveway and uh, for those of you who don't know what that is that's a saw stop professional cabinet saw uh, three horsepower so of course I have a new toy and I want to put it together so I thought I'd take you guys along for the ride just to uh, show you the assembly of the unit so without further ado let's assemble a saw stop well there she is the uh, three horsepower professional cabinet saw by saw stop um, the only thing I've really done to it so far is I've put the mobile uh, base and installed that I was going to include a video of that build but uh, good gosh it's uh, it's probably more tedious to build uh, that particular stand than what it will be to build the whole saw so that being said I'm not going to include that in the video but I'll start off with with the manual and uh, this is a pretty intimidating manual for a table saw and uh, but that's okay I'm looking forward to going through it and seeing what it all entails uh, it's got uh, some great great illustrations some great photos um, hopefully it's all going to become very clear once I get into it but I think the first thing that I'm going to do um, now that I've got it sitting here is I'm going to remove this protective sheet that's on here and uh, I'm going to wipe all of the shipping oil off of this with a, uh, a clean soft rag. So here we go. So we've got all of the oil cleaned off the top of the main body of the saw and the next thing we're looking at is installing these uh, these hand wheels and uh, this one here will be for the elevation and then of course there's another one for the bevel. Um, I gotta say these are pretty solid in comparison to my old rigid saw um, all metal construction but um, anyway what I'm gonna do here of course is screw the handle in uh, I think I'd like to put a little bit of Loctite on here, although it it doesn't say that. Uh, that's just kind of what I like to do. And then uh, from there, uh, we'll install it on the shaft for the blade elevation. Well, we're down here at saw level now to install the uh, <clears throat> the handles for the blade raise. So we're just going to take one of these keys here. I've always called them keyways. I don't know if that's the proper terminology or not. But we're just going to sit one in there like that. And then our handle will mount on top of the shaft with the key sliding into the existing slot in the handle. I've got to push it all the way in, just like that. And then once, of course, we get that in place, we need to take the three mil wrench and tighten up the set screw on the keyway. And with that now, that is our uh, raising and lowering handle. And that's, uh, that's quite a smooth action there. So now we're going to go ahead and repeat the exact same process as I've done here with the elevation handle with the side uh, bevel shaft. Well, now that I've got those two installed, uh, the next, of course, is the locking knobs for the, um, the blade height and the bevel. And uh, the shorter one, or the one with the shorter shaft, goes in for the bevel side. And then the longer one, of course, is uh, used for the blade height. So you just want to screw those in just like that. Well, the next thing we want to do before we go any further with this build is the main control unit is actually shipped inside the saw. Uh, it's already wired, etc., 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 but it's shipped inside and it's all with cable ties attached to the top.
top support rail here. So you want to make sure that you just take this whole unit out, cut the tie wraps out of there and get it out of the saw. Just be very careful that you don't cut any of the cabling that um, is attached to it. So with that being said now we've got that removed and we're going to go ahead now and install the dust port into the back of the saw. And the dust port is connected through this uh, hose here which goes up through into the blade assembly and there's kind of like a little key there that makes it so that you can align it. So I'm just going to move the camera around to the back of the saw here and uh, I'll go through how to install the dust port with you. So here we are at the back of the saw and uh, what we've got is your hole for the dust collection. I don't know if you can see that on camera but there's a little key there that kind of uh, aligns with this dust port. So you just want to take the key, line up your dust port out through the back, make sure your key lines up and it just extends through the back of the saw like that and then from there all you really need to do is get your Phillips screwdriver and hold this here against the saw firmly and we're just going to screw these screws here into the back of the saw. Alright so the next step now that we've got that dust port done is to install the motor cover onto the back of the unit. So it's just a matter here of lining it up with the saw and then you have this connecting rod and the connecting rod just slides into place and you just want to line it up get it all the way up to the top just like that and then lock it in place and of course with that in place now it's just push the release and your motor cover can open quite easily. Well, we got the extension wings cleaned up for the most part. Uh, once they're on the saw, I'll finish cleaning them up. But this isn't my first saw that I've put together, and I gotta tell you, this is the part that I hate the most, and that's putting these extension wings on this unit, on any unit. Uh, I work alone, and it is quite a chore. Um, so, I've got a stool set up here to assist me. So what you want to try to do is use the saw to balance one side and once you get that kind of balanced you want to get at least one center bolt in there to help you hold it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we're going to continue and put the rest of the hardware into this, uh, this extension wing. And then of course the last one here on this end. Now you don't want to crank these down uh, because we're going to have to do some adjustments on this wing. So you just want to snug them up. So I'm going to go ahead and finish snugging this side up and then we'll have that one wing on and then we'll get the other side put in. Okay, so here comes the fun part, and I mean that in the most sarcastic way I could ever say it. And that is using a straight edge to get, make sure that your entire tabletop is flat and that the extension wings don't have that little tiny lip on it that's going to cause you grief down the road. So you can see here, this is what we've got, and there's no way that those things are lined up perfectly. And that takes a little bit of adjustment. And guys, if, uh, if you're putting together a table saw, whether it be one like this or whether it be a, a different brand or whatever, it doesn't matter. Take your time to do this step properly. That extra little time you spend now to make sure that that tabletop is nice and flat right across with no ridges from the extension tables will save you a hell of a lot of headache further down the road. So let's go ahead, get that straight edge on there and go ahead and level up those extension wings with the main uh, body table. So what I've got here is a plastic dead blow 
and uh, the 13 mil wrench and this table is way off. I've got my 24 inch straight edge and what we're going to do is just eyeball it for now to get it uh, in, a, in a rough position of where we want it. And once we get it roughed in there, then of course we're going to use our dead blow hammer and just do your little bit of adjustment here, kind of uh, give it an attitude adjustment if you will. Guys, do not use a metal hammer on your cast iron top. Um, if that's all you have, then for crying out loud, put a piece of board on there first, um, like a 2x4 or something. Do not hit directly on a cast iron table, metal on metal. You will damage your table and there's no way your warranty will cover that. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to get these uh, tables, or these extension wings rather, straight and true and flat. And uh, then we're going to move on to the next step. Well, we're back up underneath the saw after having the uh, extension wings finally installed. And the next step is to install the... Uh, the control box and for that uh, it's as simple as putting two bolts in through um, the unit and there's two threaded holes right up top here and all you got to do is line them up and screw them in so we'll go ahead and do that and with that the main body of the saw itself is uh, together um, what's left now is for me to install the rails and the extension table. There's a few small parts with the uh, the dust or the blade guard uh, and of course installing the blade etc. So now we're going to move on and get the rails put onto this thing and let me just say up until this point in time um, that mobile base has been a godsend so if you guys were considering one of these and didn't consider the mobile base you may want to think about it. Uh, just putting it out there, you know, I'm in a small shop, I need to move this stuff around. And just in the assembly process alone, being in a confined space like this, that base has really come in handy. So with that, let's move on to putting the rails on this thing. Well, we're going to start off by mounting the rails. And we're going to start with the front rail, which in the case of this particular saw, is the longer one of the two. So we're going to go ahead and just mount it in place and tighten it down for now. Well, we're now going to go ahead and do the exact same thing with the uh, back rail. The next step that we're going to work on here is positioning these leg brackets in place. And uh, for these particular ones, it's it's pretty simple operation here. You just need to get one of these countersink bolts and you put it in place. And uh, you just bolt it in place. Of course, for now though, until we get all the adjustment done, uh, you don't want to tighten anything right down. So just finger tight here guys and that's all it'll take to do this one little part of the uh, of the assembly. Well the next step in this little adventure is to put on our um, extension table here and what we need to do is to carefully support this and it just slides up in here and there is a threaded hole up underneath for us to guide it into and uh, support it. So we'll just screw that in just lightly and now that we got it in there I can take off this protective coating that's on it kind of like a scratchy plastic. And now there's just a little bit of hardware here to go into this extension table and uh, we're not putting it all in at this point in time. We're just putting in a little bit of it. And again, just like I said before, everything finger tight here because um, we're going to have to make adjustments to all of this 
once we get all of the hardware in place and the legs and etc etc so for now uh, it's just finger tight and I'm just using this wrench of course just to make it easier to spin the bolt but <clears throat> so hardware front and back closest to the saw and then we're gonna move on well the next step is to get our legs for our extension table and we're gonna thread a nut onto the leg and and that is for once you get your adjustment of course you can crank it down and set that adjustment and then we're going to screw our adjustable uh, foot here into our legs so this one here now is is done for the most part there we go and uh, I'll go ahead and do the other one well now it's time to attach the legs to the uh, extension table and for that what we need to do is raise this table up ever so slightly and we'll just slide one of the uh, bolts through and then we'll bring that through the top hole of the leg and then of course uh, washer lock washer and uh, a hex nut and then you know what I'm gonna say finger tight and now we're at the point in time where we need to uh, attach these legs to our brackets um, that we installed earlier. So we've got a couple bolts here with some lock washers. And uh, once again, you know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say finger tight. So we're going to go ahead and install these two bolts and then move on. Well, we've got things loosely put together here on this extension table and our next step is we need to get a straight edge across this extension table and level it to the cast iron body of the saw. Uh, whether you use a long level or a long straight edge is up to you. I think I'm going to use a four foot level for this particular uh, uh, procedure. So I'm just going to lay it on there, level this up, and then tighten the bolts on the front and the rear rails, and then that will secure this whole extension table in place where it needs to be. And with that, the extension table is all leveled up, tightened up, and bolted in, as well as the legs are all bolted in and tightened, and the adjustable feet are adjusted for now. I'll probably have to do some uh, adjustments later on. But now we have to go ahead and put on the front tube in the front end of the saw, which will accept the fence at a later time. So we're going to go ahead and just hand bolt that into place. So go ahead and put all the hardware from end to end, and again, just finger tight. The next thing is adjusting this rail. We've got it sat loosely in place, finger tight on the bolts, and we need to put our fence down onto the rail, slide it off to the left, and once you get it to the far left side, lock it down with the 13 mil wrench and tighten this end of the rail. Once that's done, we're going to slide it down to the right hand side of the fence and repeat the process. Then we can go along, test the fence, and tighten down all the rest of the hardware. And with that, by adjusting left and then right, and then all spaces in between, of course, our fence is uh, adjusted, the rail is adjusted, and it locks down, and that is dead solid. Okay, the adjustments are done on the rail, as I said just in the last segment. And now I'm going to go through all the stuff of uh, adjusting the fence, making sure that it's parallel to the blade, ensuring that the blade is parallel to the miter slots, etc., uh, etc., et uh, setting the stops for the 0 and 45 degree angles, uh, all of that calibration stuff that comes with the new table saw, which hopefully um, shouldn't be too bad because, from what I understand, uh, these are pretty well calibrated in the factory. Um, but we all know how that goes, don't we? Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do all of that, and then once I'm done with the calibration and all that jazz, I'm going to come back and see you. We're going to show you what it's like in its final resting spot, and I'll give you a summary of what I think so far just from the assembly. And there you have it. The three horsepower saw stop professional cabinet saw. Uh, I don't know. Pretty cool unit. 
Um, I hope I never have to test the, uh, the brake feature on the blade. Uh, I think not only will I be changing the brake mechanism, but I'll probably also be changing my shorts after it goes off. Um, so far I, I like it. It's a lot more solid than the rigid 3650 that I had. And um, truth be told, I mean, I was pretty darn impressed with the way that they laid out the packaging for all of the, uh, the different procedures. You can see here on the packaging, everything's color coded and you can just follow through with the manual and uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty easy process. This did take pretty much my afternoon and uh, you know, I, I, I did need a little bit of help from time to time. So you guys might want to consider getting a helper to help you put this together. But uh, in general, uh, so far, I've only made two cuts on it, but uh, she purrs like a kitten. So with that being said, there you go. Hopefully in a few months of use, I'll come back and see you guys, and I'll give you my thoughts on what I really think of the saw. But for now, I think uh, I've got some reading to do with the manual to see how this thing really works and what I should expect from it. So guys, thanks for watching. And I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.